Hi there, and welcome to this very special video. This is the first in a series of interviews that I will be doing with the people who have inspired me most with Zill playing. I'm really excited about this because for the last 20 years, I have been amazed and inspired by a number of incredible finger snowball players throughout the world. And I am thrilled at the opportunity to get to talk to them a bit more about their craft and also to share what it is that they do with you in hopes to maybe inspire you and your Zill playing as well. Today, I'll be speaking with the amazing Lauren Cecchio, who is a musician and an artist and a jewelry maker out of Austin, Texas. I met Lauren a number of years ago through the belly dance circuit here, and she wowed me not only with her Zill playing and her unique technique, but also her ability as a percussionist to break down the Zills in a way that I had never been exposed to and in a way that made it make so much more sense. So we'll be talking a bit about her history, how she got into music and drumming. It's a very cool story. How she was introduced to Zills, also very interesting, and how she came to love them and what she loves most about them now. You'll also learn about a couple of classes that she has in the works that I highly recommend. Any opportunity to study with this woman, you want to do it. I have learned so much from her over the last 10 or so years, and I'm really excited to introduce her here to you today. Please welcome Lauren Cecchio. Cool. All right. Well, thanks, Lauren, so much for being willing to uh, geek out with me on the finger symbols. You are one of my major inspirations with Zills, and I have learned so much from you over the years. I thought, let's let's share this joy with the world. So I appreciate you hanging out with me today. Of course. So I would like to know a little bit, and this is something I don't think I've ever really talked to you about before. Like, obviously, you also are a drummer, and you play didge, and you're a musician all around. How did Zilling come into the picture for you? Uh, Zilling came in actually, at the time I was living in Boise, Idaho, of all places. I went to college there and I ended up, I was already drumming by that point, but I ended up going to a show and it was Suhela. I had no idea who that was at the time, but I bought my first hip scarf and my first pair of Zills after uh, being introduced to it by Suhela. Oh, I love it. Well, that's a great yeah. place to start for sure. So yeah. I'm sure there was a lot of that. And so it was actually, a, it was a performance that you went yes. to see. Oh, okay. And Very cool. Pictures, and I was so excited to get my first Zills and hip scarf. <laughs> I love it. So you had yeah. been drumming for how long at that point? You know, it, probably about six years, I think, already, uh, before I was introduced to the Middle Eastern drumming. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. So it was six years, but it was not within the belly dance community at exactly. all. Oh, yeah. okay. Was it ethnic drumming? Was it like African drumming well, or hand drumming? Actually, or? I got introduced to drumming through my sister taking me to a dead show when I was young, and I saw, you know, the drum circle there. And I was just amazed. So for Christmas last year, I asked for a set of bongos and I got them. And I learned how to play those just, you know, back, we didn't have the internet. So you just did what you could. Uh -huh. And <laughs> I ended up going to my first drum circle and just with my little tiny bongos. Oh, I love it. I can just imagine. Else. And uh, had, a, had a blast. And right after that, I left for college for Boise, Idaho. So I didn't really have much more opportunity to study. Uh, but when I was in Boise, I came across a road trip opportunity. And me and a bunch of friends piled into a car. And we went to the Oregon Country Fair. Okay. And another weird full circle is, is at the Oregon Country Fair, I played drums in the drum circle place there, and in come the coolest looking belly dancers I've ever seen. I mean, it was Sharon Kihara. I had no, no idea at the time. But looking back on it, I now realize who it was and her troop of people who performed there. And I was like, oh, belly dancing is cool. <laughs> <laughs> now this 
kind of blows my mind because fast forward how many years and you play for her at Third Coast Tribal. Exactly. And now I'm sure at some point you shared this story with her. Yes. Yes. I had no it was the first idea. cool belly dancer I ever saw. I'd already seen, you know, I've seen like housewives doing it or, you know, other kinds of belly dance, but I was like blown away by this new kind of belly dance I had never seen before. Oh, wow. Now, what can you remember what year this was? Like how long ago? Because you've been drumming for quite a while now. That was in early 2000s, I think. Okay. I think. Oh, God, I'm so bad at the timeline. No, I'm the same way, yeah. too. But I'm just kind of curious, like, where was Sharon in her evolution as yeah. a dancer at that point in time 20 years ago? Was her troupe, were they doing kind of like a folkloric, uh, you know, I think of Ren Faire thing? It's or were they all like tribal in tribals? Just in it with wasn't the, drum the circle. performance. Oh, oh, yeah. okay. It was just, you know, I'm playing drums in this drum circle and these beautiful belly dancers walk in and I'm like, that's what I want to be when I grow up, you know? <laughs> oh, I love it. And yes. now like you are the woman who makes the music that the dancers <laughs> want to dance to. I, that's amazing. So yeah. you were doing like the drum circle thing, but you yeah. said you didn't get a lot of chance to actually formally study. How did you end up getting connected to, I guess, this belly dance the experience? Well, yeah. ironically enough, on that same road trip, we went to San Francisco and I go into this, you know, older music store on Haight-Ashbury and I find this book called Doombeck Delight. Mm. And I practiced the whole road trip home. I was obsessed. That was like the first time I had ever seen the Middle Eastern drum and someone write it down. And it was a woman who wrote the book, Mary Ellen Donald. I was yes. like, oh my God. So I practiced all the way home. And then believe it or not, I had an opportunity to go to Israel shortly after that. So off I went <laughs> to Israel. Okay. Yeah, because, you know, we didn't have YouTube. If you wanted to learn Middle Eastern drumming, guess what? You go to, yeah, the, Middle go to the Middle East. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. real, right? <laughs> and so off I went, and I had you know, tons of experiences there with, you know, the local drummers in Jerusalem. And then I went to Boulder, Colorado, from Israel. I moved to Boulder. And there... Uh, I met Ty Barho, whose teacher was Zakir Hussein, which is one of the best tabla players in the world. And I got to study with him and Zakir. And I joined my first Middle Eastern band called Sherafe in Boulder. Oh my goodness. Now, how many different sort of styles of drumming have you played with over the years? And like, how many different kinds of drums do you play? Well, I mean, really, it's, I'm going to go back to the Grateful Dead for a second, because I know that sounds weird, but the Grateful Dead's drummer, Mickey Hart, wrote a book called Planet Drum. And in that book, it's the history of drumming through all of the cultures of the world and stories in there of, you know, drum journeys and shamanism and all this. And that's how I got it introduced to Zakir Hussein was in his book. So I became obsessed with all these different drums from all over the world. And I found that book on Dumbek. And then I moved and I played tabla. But I, I didn't want to stop there. I loved all the drums. I think at one point I lived in a house where you couldn't even live, walk through the living room. There were so many drums. Oh my and, God, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> So I learned African, I learned the Middle Eastern, Indian, uh, Persian, uh, you know, it just goes on and on and on, you know, the rhythms from all over the world. So oh, that's they all have a language. So you're actually learning to speak with these different groups of drummers, you know? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I don't think I, I realized. I mean, I knew that you were like, 
amazing on the drum, but I don't think I understood like exactly what your, your experience and all of the different sort of cultural aspects that you've been exposed to. So going back to the finger symbols, you yeah. see Suhaila, you buy your finger symbols, you buy your hip scarf, and then did you sign up for belly dance classes to learn to play the finger symbols or did you just take no, it from a drummer's I just, perspective? I, really, I guess I really did not like them when belly dancers would use the finger symbols and they would just play that one tone <laughs> i was like no <laughs> <laughs> like no thank you <laughs> you know i you i, I Part of me is tempted to edit that out, but I, love, I know that a lot of people feel the same way. Like you are definitely not alone. And when I talk to people about perhaps why they don't choose to play finger symbols, that is definitely something that's been mentioned before that they just don't like the way it sounds. Well, let me tell you another story if you don't okay. mind. Oh, you can put this do. in or edit it out, but <laughs> I want to be honest with you please because do. this is really about my experience with the finger symbols. When I was five, my parents took me to a Greek restaurant and out comes a belly dancer. And she comes up to me and she's just playing around with me and playing her finger symbols. And I start hysterical crying because I'm scared, right? And my mom has to bring me out of the restaurant because I'm throwing such a fit, uh -huh. of, you know? And then she tells me while we're outside that that's actually my kindergarten teacher. But I didn't recognize her because she had all the makeup and the this. <laughs> oh, no. so, oh, I don't no. really remember this, but that's what my mom tells me happened. <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah. my goodness. That, that, did you not want to go back to school after that? <laughs> no, I was fine with the real okay. part. I just wasn't fine with this person that I, you know. <laughs> I had no idea who she was and why she wanted to dance with you. Yeah, so why she wanted to be near me. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. So yeah, you were mildly traumatized by belly dancers with Zills at an early age. But I feel like you're a great successful recovery story. Okay. Well, this is the story of how I came to love them. Let's okay. just do that story. No, I like this yeah. because my 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 hope and my my dream is that perhaps in some way we could take some people who already hate them and help them to love them. So if you can do it, other people can too, right? Yeah. So when I was in my 20s, I went to Maui. And of course, I was already into drums. I had messed around with belly dance, uh, didgeridoo. You know, I was already doing all of those things. Well, I met this woman there who was teaching classes and I didn't know this, but she was doing Suhaila technique at the time, and uh, she played the finger symbols. And she introduced me to the different sounds of the uh, finger symbols. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, hold on a second. There's more than just the ring. I'm down. Now, <laughs> now I love the finger symbols. Ah, because you saw yeah. that they were capable of so much more. And they were a musical instrument. Yes. I love it. I'd like to thank her for yes. inspiring you so that you can inspire others. That's awesome. That's awesome. And so from there, you were, was, you were hooked and was you like, were going to study yes. it and learn it the way yes. that you do. That's amazing. So now that you've been playing the finger symbols for how long? How long ago was that? If you oh, had to estimate. A long time. A long time ago. <laughs> That's awesome. And so you've definitely developed, like I find a, a style and a methodology of teaching that is very different from a lot of people who've come from, I'm a belly dancer, I've learned to play finger symbols with the dance, and now I'm going to play them or teach them. So that's what I love about you is you're coming at it as a, as a percussionist uh, and as a musician, which I think is really cool. So before we get into the ins and outs of that, I want to know now that you've learned to love them, like what are some of your favorite aspects of playing finger symbols? Oh man, there's so many, but I think coming from a percussion place where you're always sitting and you're kind of have the drum in your lap. So everything is kind of, you know, contained to being able to have freedom of movement is just huge. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's so amazing. And then from a dancer perspective, all of a sudden you have something you can do with your hands. You don't have to worry so much about what your hands are doing. They're occupied which for me made my dancing like 
a lot better. As soon as I could put the instruments in my hands, then I was able to, you know, let go a little bit with the, with the dance. Oh, that's awesome. I didn't really think about that, right? It takes away, I mean, you, obviously you're thinking about the finger symbols, yeah. but you don't have to worry so much about your hands. And it gave you something, especially as a, as a musician and as a profession, yeah. as something to hook into that was familiar to you. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's hopefully something that everyone could see as a bonus. I think so many dancers come to the finger symbols as like this extra thing they have to figure out how to use on top of their dancing. And maybe yeah. if more of us could almost think about it from another angle, like here is something that gives you freedom, right? To create music and move and to not worry so much about exactly what your hands are doing because you are making the music. Maybe yeah. you could see it as a more positive and I think situation. the framing of your body is easier with the finger symbols on. Oh, okay. Sure. Just because of what you do with your arms? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. I will admit as a, as a frequent finger symbol player, like when I don't, if I don't have them on during a performance, I feel mildly naked. Like yeah. it's just, it's like something's missing. Something's yeah. a little bit off. And so I think, yeah. yeah, once people come to a place of total comfort with them, it's like my, my lovey that has to yeah. be on stage yeah. with me. Right. <laughs> awesome. So now talking about your teaching. So this is, this is great. The backstory real quick for folks who might not know both of us. Um, that you and I, when we taught together at Migrations two years ago, we got to teach sort of a, a drummer dancer class. You're drumming, talking about rhythm, and I would be doing a little bit of zilling and talk about dance with the zills. And it was great because we came up with our curriculum and we decided what rhythms we were going to cover. She showed me the way she breaks them down. I'm like, oh yeah, these are all very familiar. Let's go for it. And we sit down in the class and she starts kind of breaking down. It might have been melody, something super basic, right? And you talk about how you play it on the zills. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's not how I, that's not how I played on this. Like right in the middle of class. I remember, I feel like we totally derailed class and it became this huge, interesting for so many people, like discussion on the theory of if you're looking at the finger symbols as a musical instrument, as a percussion instrument with multiple sounds many, many, many multiple sounds. How do you relate it to the drum? I do not play the drum. I, I can play on a drum, but I do not play the drum correctly. And so I have never looked at it from this angle. And so I'm gonna let you describe it a bit more, but for the, for the dancers out there for, for years, for the last, it had been 18 years at that point before we had this conversation, for the last 18 years of my dance career, I would do my dooms as a clack and my techs as a ring because as a dancer, when I was going to accent a move, doom, doom, I was going to make it really hard and clacky on the, on the zills. And so when I would play melody, I would do clack, clack, ring, 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 clack, ring, 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 because that's the dooms were clacks in my vocabulary always. And along comes Lauren and she's like, oh, no, 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 no. The doom is a ring. And I'm like, are you crazy? What are you talking about? And so this is where the conversation ensued. And so I'll let you sort of explain the theory of how you knit together, like how does the drumming relate to the zilling and how can we look at dooms and clacks and rings and texts as being all part of the same vernacular? Yeah. Well, this is exactly what I'm gonna teach in my class. But there. the doom is the ring because it's the sustained note on the drum. That, I mean, it really, in my head, that's what it came down to. The doom is the open sustained note. It's the, actually the only sustained note on the drum ah, and okay. it's the only sustained note really on the zills. So it just went together for me um, there. And then everything else lined up because Tika on the drum, you do uh, kind of ghost notes, I would say. Mm -hmm. Take time. Well, that's your Tika on the zills. And then Klaka is your Tekka. So you have all the say it, it exactly correlates with what how I teach the drum. I love this because it suddenly made the translation of belly dance rhythms which we all learn as belly dancers right. all learn to vocalize the rhythms we all learn the doom and the tech and the ka and there were kind of two levels of this like realizing that if as a belly dancer playing the zills I'm only going to use the open ring now 
like you instantly have way fewer rhythms at your disposal, right? Like the Belladi and the Saidi, yeah, like it's the same. They're all going to be the same. It's yeah. the same thing if you yeah. only have one sound. What yeah. makes all these rhythms possible is that on the drum, you have many sounds to create it, even right. if the pulse is the same. So Absence. that was, yeah, very, very eye opening. Yeah. And then to realize that you could create more of a like, one-to-one -one correlation so that if someone did learn a drum rhythm say either as a drummer or as a student learning how to vocalize a rhythm you could instantly pick up your finger symbols and play it That's there'd be exactly no what i'm saying <laughs> yes <laughs> that's it and so yeah once you that's know it. that the power is in your hands like yes. you don't really need someone to and pay. not only that you can switch to riff you can switch to frame drum i mean once you learn in this language it actually can go to all the middle eastern percussion <sighs> it's the same thing and i never understood why is it still the same mm -hmm. yeah but because dancers were doing it i think so right i think it's because people were coming from yeah. dance and picking up these things and going oh well i'll, I'll play them yeah. like this which is which is fine there's nothing right. wrong with it but we weren't we're not approaching it as a musician because right. we're primarily dancers but i would exactly. say the minute you put those babies on you are now a musician, yes. so it behooves us to connect with musicians like you to say, okay, well, now that I'm a musician, like, right. am, I, am I doing this in a way that makes sense musically, All right? Exactly. I love it. I love it. Yes. And so you mentioned you are teaching a, a course on this very idea, and I know yes. you also mentioned briefly before we started here that you also have a, a methodology for notating zil rhythms and so tell us a little bit about the course and, and what's involved that way i can sign up as fast as possible the course is going to be an introduction to exactly this concept you're going to learn rhythms on the frame drum you're going to learn rhythms on the zills and you're going to be able to seamlessly go between the two we're going to add some movement to it so you're not just sitting because like i said i think the beautiful part about zills is that you can move and the frame drum, we're going to be standing up and playing so you can walk while you play it and do some simple dance moves as well. So the frame drum allows you to bring a little bit of movement and dance also into this. And I'm writing everything out for you guys. At first, you're going to need to see it in the language of ring clap, tigga clap, and doom tekka. But hopefully after the four weeks, you'll be able to look at a rhythm that has doom tekka and instantly be able to play it on the zills like you were talking about or look at a zill rhythm and play it on the doom back. The notation is very simple. I'm literally writing one eanda, two eanda, three eanda, four eanda and putting symbols over it. So you don't have to be a musician to read it. Ah, that's brilliant because that's something I always like to try to bring to my students as a way of notating. That's a big, it was a big deal, especially like back when we were started zilling, like you yeah. couldn't just pull out your phone and record what the rhythm sounded like. I was always trying to write it in a notebook. And luckily I had musical experience so I could write it like a musician would write it or just write it with the, the numeric notation. But for people who don't have that background, right. writing, you know, D, D, T, K, T, you get home and you're like, uh, like that's really hard to interpret without the baseline of your pulse and, and everything else. <sighs> I'll be there. This sounds, this sounds thrilling. I absolutely love it. And I think it's something, I think in a lot of ways, what it hopefully will, I imagine will do for people is demystify the finger symbols. I think I've done a bit of interviewing recently with, with students and teachers who don't play or teach the zills out of just personal curiosity as a zill nut, like yeah. why? Why? And the common thread in almost all of these is a bad first experience. Not quite like yours, um, but, but, but not so traumatizing, but like a bad experience in that someone put these zills in their hands and they didn't really know exactly what they were doing. So what they attempted to translate to the dancer like was just confusing and didn't make any sense and wasn't able, they weren't able to do it right or couldn't figure out what they were supposed to be doing. And the frustration overwhelmed them and they decided that zilling was not for them. And I, I get that, that's super frustrating. Luckily, I didn't have that experience. Luckily, you know, you saw Zilling with Suhaila and you're like, okay, there's some cool yeah. stuff going on here. Um, and I think that, that when it's unknown, when you're not sure what you're supposed to be doing, 
of course it's frustrating. Of yeah. course it's overwhelming. Of course it's kind of scary because you have no idea what it's supposed to sound like. So I think this coming at it from this framework, knowing the, the drumming behind it and the notation, then it's just, it, it makes sense. It's very practical, very legible, very yes. understandable. Thank yes. you for doing that. It's and almost, I will be there. <laughs> it's almost like in Indian music, even if you're a sitarist, you have to learn some tabla. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if you're a drummer, you have to learn some melody instrument. Oh. It's just, they go together. So if you're leaving one part out, you're not really holding on to what it is that you're doing. And mm -hmm. You can't let go of something until you've held on to it first. Oh, that's deep. No, the, if you take anything away from this interview, <laughs> that <laughs> nugget, right? Like it does, it goes together. So you have to, you have to know a bit about both. And yes. then if you decide, you know what, now that I understand Zill rhythms and I can play them, right. but I'm not going to, cause it's not my style. Yeah. That's you fine. can let go of it because yeah. you have held on to it first. I love that. I love that. This is fantastic. I wanted to talk about one more thing, though. Please do. Yeah. I want to talk about why my Zill playing is unique. <gasps> you if you tell it. Okay. I know why I think it's unique, but you, you tell why you think okay. it's unique. Well, when I was playing around with the Zills as instruments, I discovered something really cool that the Zills have magic that happens oh. by interacting with each other that you don't even have to do anything. It's kind of like when you skip a rock and then all these other things happen off of it. That's the same thing with the Zills. So I was able to incorporate these really cool techniques uh, that I don't think I've ever seen before. And their swipes and chomps and itsy bitsy spiders and all these fun things. And we will definitely work on some of those fun additions as well. Oh, I'm so glad. That's definitely some of the stuff that drew me to your Zill playing. I used to watch the little videos that you would post up on social media and I was like, what is she doing? What is, what is happening? Like just, you know, and things that are above and beyond like the four basic sounds that's like not even the tip of the iceberg when it comes to your Zill playing. I have just a couple of quick questions for you. I want to do okay. a, little, a little lightning round, a little lightning round Zill talk. So just quick, quick little short questions. How many pairs of Zills do you own? Three. <gasps> Only three. Oh, Lauren, help me. Let me help you fix that. <laughs> you know, I have really small hands. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the zills that are so cool, they're huge. True. I don't know. I wish, I wish I can't like measure my hand next to yeah. yours in the zoom lens, but like I have yeah. tiny hands too. I really do. And I love me like the big chompy zills, but no, yeah. the stuff you do with those tiny little, you play those little tinker zills. Oh yeah. And I am <laughs> blown away. I am blown away. So that leads me to my next question. What's your favorite pair? Actually, my favorite pair are the Grecian Soroyans. Oh, the large ones or the small ones? Small. <laughs> of course. Why did I ask? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I got gotcha. you. Okay. So you answered my brass or silver. Dominant hand lead or continuously alternating? Dominant hand. I'm the same. <laughs> um, totally Zill unrelated. What is your favorite quarantine activity? <laughs> you know, it's been so fun. My dad calls me every day and he's like, hey, you got time? <laughs> 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 and what's your response? <laughs> like, yes, Dad, I have time. And we just make jokes about quarantine and it's it oh. lightens my day a little bit. I love that. Yeah, I love that you time. do that with your dad. I'm, That's I'm so on cool. my drive to nowhere. He's like, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Whenever anyone like, you know, we hang out with the neighbors because we quarantine with them, they'll be like, pool tomorrow at two. And I always say, let me check my calendar. And then I'm like, I don't need to check my calendar. There's nothing on my calendar. Yes, I'll be here at two. That's what <laughs> my dad is saying. He's like, do you have time today? And I'm like, let me check my calendar. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I'm glad that your calendar has been cleared so that you can create these incredible Zill classes. Do you want to talk briefly about the other, the Frame Drum Goddess class that you're planning yes, on? Yes, and this one isn't available yet because it's in the work, but I'll just show you the book since I have it right here. 
It's called When the Drummers Were Women, and it's by Lane Redman. And it's a history of drumming since Paleolithic times. Uh, it is, and the goddess, just in general. And it has just blown my mind how many images were kind of buried of women playing the frame drum. And in this book, they're all illuminated. And you can just see how part of, how much a part of life uh, frame drumming and goddess culture was and for that amazing amount of time. That sounds incredible. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And so when people want to sign up for either the Zill course or the drumming course, how can they find you to be able to register? Uh, either on Facebook, uh, they can message me or uh, my, my email would be fine too. So Okay, I I'll be sure to put all that yeah. info. I'll link it with the video. That way people can get in touch with you directly and register for your classes yeah. and learn some fantastic rhythm and zills. This is awesome. Thank you so much, Lauren. This yeah. has been really, inf I've learned some more about you. I like you even more. I didn't think that was possible. <laughs> oh, thank you. Hopefully we'll inspire a new generation yes. of people previously traumatized by the Zills to yes. us. <laughs> Pick them up and give them a second chance. <laughs> yes, don't be traumatized. There's way more than meets the eye. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much, Lauren. Okay, thank you. So what do you think, folks? This woman is the real deal. And I am so excited about these classes that she's going to be offering, both about the Zill and drum technique and the history of drums and women and the goddess. I'm stoked. You'll find Lauren's information attached to this video here so you can follow her on social media and find out when these classes release. And hopefully, I will see you there. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. I look forward to sharing with you more the inspirations behind my Zill playing in future videos. Is there someone that inspires your Zill playing? Reach out and let me know. I'd love to hear from you.